In this video, I'm gonna go over a 15 by 15 RBMK for depleting highly enriched sherbidium for euphemium production. It is going to use thorium as stabilizer and medium enriched plutonium as the driving fuel. Now, this design doesn't have automatic control rods because it's already 4:30 a.m. right now, and between work and studies, I didn't have a lot of time to optimize the design with the automatic control rods. Once I do optimize that, that video will be out soon. So, without any further ado, let's get straight into this. So we start our build on this 15 by 15 platform I have already marked out the center and that is on the ground level all of the piping work can go below. So these are all of the components that you will need now do notice that none of the component is actually moderated so all of these are normal components and here are the additional components that you can or you are gonna require I have marked them out on the screen now for the fuel. Medium and rich plutonium is the main driving fuel. For the stabilizer, we have four thorium, medium and rich uranium, and the four depleting fuels will be the highly enriched sherbidium. So we start with the fuel rod first, place it in the very center of the 15 by 15 and surround it with four control rods. Now, as medium and rich uranium is a moderate fuel, we are going to set the color to yellow. So all the four control rods are yellow and in the corners place down the steam channels and set all of them to ultra dense steam. All of the steam channels in this entire build will be set to ultra dense steam. Now place down some graphite moderators and we now complete this 5x5 structure by placing some structural columns. So that's the 5x5 done. Now we come out by one and place down the other fuel rod which is going to hold the thorium medium and rich uranium so surround this with three more control rods and this one is set to green as this is the safest fuel in our entire build so once you have done that repeat the process on the remaining three sides and with that we only have like four more fuel rods to place so once the control rods are placed like this now we are gonna start placing some moderators in front of the control rods and in the intersection that will be formed we can place a fuel rods there so place down graphite moderators like this and basically they should cover the entire path that the neutrons are gonna take now this will give you intersections like this on all the four sides here we are going to place our final fuel rods which will hold the highly enriched sherbidium so place down four fuel rods in the intersections like this and next we are going to place some control rods and these control rods by the way will be set to red because this is the most dangerous fuel that we have and do that on all the sides and in order to control the temperature using these control rods i'm going to place some moderators and reflectors so two moderators here and in front of them place down the reflectors and this will directly impact the burning temperature of the highly enriched sherbidium rod it won't really affect the thorium that much but yeah on sherbidium it will have a big effect now do notice that you also need to place the reflectors right here and right here so i forgot placing them i place structural columns instead but make sure that you also place reflectors in front of the remaining four moderators like this now basically to cool down the highly enriched sherbidium you can place down three steam channels i to test this out basically in my original build i only placed three but you can also place four by breaking one diagonal block like this on all of the sides or even if you place three then it should be fine it doesn't really matter that much so here we have placed down four steam channels on all the sides for the highly enriched sherbidium and now to cool down the thorium we place down two more steam channels like this and as i told you before that all of these steam channels will be set to ultra dense steam now if you use moderated parts in this build then the size will reduce of course but yeah so basically now this is where i made the mistake i placed the structural column don't do that place down reflectors instead of structural columns and then in the remaining sections we can completely fill up the remaining spaces with structural columns to give it kind of a circular look 
if you don't place reflectors then neutrons will leak and the area will be irradiated so yeah make sure to place down reflectors where i placed the structural columns and finally we place down one more layer to give it that complete circular look like this now this is the tedious part place down rbmk covers on all of the columns and if you want to see the Cherenkov radiation then make sure to place down the transparent rbmk covers on all of the fuel rods otherwise you can also place down the normal rbmk covers and once that's done now we can come to the bottom and connect all of the steam channels with water pipes now most of you on the channel are already familiar on how to do this step so i'm speeding through this entire process but uh, what i would recommend is instead of just placing water pipes in selected positions like this and by the way do make sure to connect the inner and the outer ring of the water pipes you can connect them on any corner that you want but make sure that the inner and the outer rings are connected and to make this entire process easier just make a grid of pipes don't connect them selectively like this just make an entire grid down here and then place down the steam connector wherever there is the steam channel on the top it should make a connection like this and now on the bottom part we are going to place down the ultra dense steam fuel pipes so once that entire process is done i have made a simple setup of turbine and cooling tower so the ultra dense steam comes in and then goes into four turbines and that is converted into low pressure steam which is converted back into water using a single cooling tower now make sure to fill up the steam channels with water by connecting a barrel a temporary barrel like this and once you place down all of the fuel rods so you can see in the middle we have the medium and rich plutonium and all of the center ones like this we have thorium and finally in the diagonal corner ones we have highly enriched cerbidium so once you place down all of the fuel rods and make this simple turbine cooling tower setup then we can start our reactor so first pull out all of the green control rods by 100% and also the yellow control rods by 100% now make sure and do remember this don't ever pull out the red control rods by 100 percent otherwise this reactor will explode instantly so we pull this out the red control rods by 35 percent right now and basically that should bring the temperature nearly to like 2000 degrees celsius or 1900 probably but yeah so by pulling them out by 35 percent you can see that the reactor is producing ultra dense steam the turbines are going and water consumption is like over 100,000 millibuckets per second which is easily handled by a single cooling tower and power as you can see we are producing roughly 24 million hg per second now if we pull out the red control rods a bit more let's say 40 percent so before we had 35 now we are going to pull them by 40 so now you can see that the temperature will reach near 2700 degrees celsius these rods explode at 3000 degrees celsius and but basically just look at the power jump we are now getting over 30 million hg per second so yeah the rods the highly enriched cerbidium rods will deplete at a pretty quick rate but make sure to keep an eye out on the depletion levels of thorium and replace them when they are completely depleted by pressing the az5 so peace out stay safe